So here I am, the seven oh I'm sorry, not your family. In yo, in yo. Not sure how to pronounce it. Indian National Park, I think it's called, or State Park. Here we go. Not sure what the speed limit is here. So. Very barren. Not unpleasant. I mean, the weather's good right now. I'm at, we're at about 4,000 feet, by the way, so. Uh, not quite a mile, you know. The place is up to 10,000, so we're going to be climbing pretty high, so let's see uh, what my mountain skills is like. I am not hiking, I'm riding up there, and maybe if I get to, there's supposed to be that old uh, famous Medusa, Medusa tree, which is the fam most famous tree for this version of the tree. Um, it's, uh, what is it, like 4,700 years old and still alive. So it's got to be up there somewhere. That seems like where it should be. Some of the peaks here is at 14,000, so I'm not sure, you know, I'm no gauge expert, but I'm not sure that that's 14,000. Interesting, I was at Arco earlier, uh, just, you know, get my coffee, and they actually ran out of all glass gasoline, so I wonder if that's something normal, you know? It's $3, I believe, to get into this little place, I don't know, they said, uh, uh, that's fair, I think that's fair, $3, I'm not sure what I'm going to get into, of course, no, I don't know what I'm what my payment is but like I said I don't mind paying a nominal fee for you know for basically looking at trees so you know like I said there are other people got my idea except they're they're not motorized three dollars you know that's what I say uh, Yosemite your I think entry I paid thirty five dollars just to get through the 120 and it's not even going to be useful for me by the time I come back because unfortunately uh, I'm going to be crossing over. I may even cross a, at a different point at this point because I don't see why I should pay $35 just to go through the city road. I mean, whatever, you know, it's like I'm not really complaining about it, just that I don't want to do it again, you know. So it's important to get decent road footage at least. So that way, um, you know, I have the memory of it and not have to do it again. If I need to go visit Yosemite, yes, I'll just watch some my some of my videos again and call it a day. Oh. All right, I should slow down, huh? I'm gonna do 30 miles, at least try. Just so I can soak in the the view. One of the 
things I have to say about I'll go back to the my this writing I am this is right here is really comfortable writing this bike does remarkably remarkably well a lot better than scrambler to be to be honest um these type of this journey at least it's uh it's just so just respond so well and I don't know I mean I'm sure other bikes do that too you know I'm just saying that it's more something I didn't ex quite expect I honestly thought it was going to be uh, good but I wasn't really defining or I had really hadn't thought about the experience but I really feel comfortable that's the I guess that's the right word it's very comfortable right now Maybe if I go up here, we'll get a shot. This is a great view. It's really nice right now. Now, this could be a desert. It could be 100 degrees in the afternoon. I have no idea. I feel like it might be. That's why, if I, I might have should have gotten here earlier. But, you know, as I said, a little bit of... Uh, laxy daisy you know. Took a little time on the... Yeah, you know, the toilet, you know, it is what it is, you know, want to be as fresh as possible for what's essentially be, it's not that bad, it's only about 300 and something miles to St. Say, say George, I think a little over 300 miles, that's nothing, right? It is for your back though, so... Now, there are trees up here, right? <laughs> uh, just joking. Oh. Well, I don't think I have signal anymore. I have a 4G thing, but no bars, so... I think my bars are out. Anyway, so it is what it is. I don't know what it is about remote areas waving to people. You know, something I remember I took uh, my sister and I, we went to Vermont. We flew out there actually and we rented a car and stuff but it was just the way you know when you go into these remote areas people wave at each other i knew that when i lived in vermont that's just what you do you know i don't know why you do it but you know it's kind of pleasant i suppose uh, maybe because you're you might depend on these same people you know you never know we were riding on these dirt roads out of the middle of nowhere and you never know your car breaks down and the person you might have waved to five minutes ago is the same person might be able to help you out so if you ever do these kind of journeys yeah just remote wave to people you know i mean you don't have to you don't have to be flashy about it just well we're, we're bikers so we we've waved anyway so but yeah you know what just wave uh because you never know you, if these people will and you might be the one helping them out too so anyway hmm. all right well it's not an unpleasant road it's relatively clean stable it's not there's no pothole so those three dollars that you pay for it's six dollars I think for uh, for a car I I think I pay three because I'm on a motorcycle or because they pay three dollars per person assuming you don't have a car right so you pay three dollars and then for cars it's six so maybe I'm gonna pay six dollars who the hell knows I'm literally just gonna go up there drink my coffee get some water I ate some French toast that I had leftovers from yesterday dinner I didn't even finish it all, I just ate one. Something about not eating a lot while we were traveling, you know.
Well, today I guess I'm a little more talkative. talkative. Yesterday seemed, uh, you know, yeah, you've, it almost felt forced if I did. I didn't even talk at all. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it was different reasons, different uh, maybe it was just getting accustomed to it. Now that I'm more settled, I'm not necessarily more rested, I don't think. But I am more settled. Second day of hopefully a amazing two weeks. I my plan is to get back to back home by not this Friday though, next Friday. That's my plan. That's my hope. We'll see. Like this is day after Labor Day, so hopefully there's not a lot of like people lined up. You should have seen the, the the cars up in Yosemite kind of get out of Yosemite. Inyo National Park, Inyo, Inyo, Inyo. It's a weird, uh, weird, weird name. I'm not even sure. Inyo, 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 Inyo. Anyway, that's where I am. So my first. Uh, Park? Well, except the Yosemite, maybe. It's getting wor really warm. I feel like it's getting warm. Especially in my hands. Hands are the ones that get coldest. It's also the ones that get warm. From the sun, anyway. Direct sun. My ears are popping now. I'm not even sure this is the actual road into the into the park. Uh, I mean, it, obviously it is. I mean, where is it? We're at 6,000 feet. got 4,000 feet to go. We were at 4,000, so that was only about 2,000 feet up rise, so... Hmm, okay, we were only one-third of the way up. Have I been to 10,000 feet before? I'm not, I'm, honestly, I don't remember. I'm not, I've been up to... I think I've been close to that, about 9,000... A little over 9,000, maybe? So... 
They said at 14,000 you might get some kind of uh, might get some kind of uh, air sickness. thing you don't, you don't see in a video is the smell. Just a whiff of pine and green. Amazing. It's not, it's very subtle right now. I imagine it'll get stronger, but it's very nice. It's like an essence. Are popping again. See some trees. It's a, uh, it's like a perfume, a pineish perfume. I'm not sure it's pine. I'm just saying. 
behind us. Very nice. I would say it's about, temperature wise, without the sun, direct sun, it's about 65. to see if they wave back. Don't worry about it. Just wave. Might be coming down and the guy may be uh, needing help on a flat tire. You never know. You never know. Now it's flattened out a bit. We're on Highway 168 by the way. <coughs> This looks like a normal road here. If I didn't know any better, I'd be just on another road. This is just another road, I think. And then we're actually going to go turn off here to the actual... to the actual road that goes to... What's it called? White Mountain Road, but Bristle Cone Park. Ancient, something ancient, ancient Bristle Cone Park. So it says I should be making a left here. White Mountain Road. Oh, dee da. Okay. Now we go. Now we see. Limited use area. All vehicle limited to existing road. Exhibit. The guard, guard shack. Is there anybody here? Do you pay? Okay. Uh, At the Gray Grove Visitor Center, 10 miles ahead. All right. Guess they're not expecting too much tourist. I don't think there's any bathrooms up here, so if you ever plan on going up here, 
do your business down there. I guess you can do your business here too. I mean, there's a bush everywhere. I don't see why they wouldn't want mind that. Hopefully, uh, day after Labor Day, it's quiet, nice and quiet. They do have water up here, I heard. You can, there's no fountains, you can buy bottled water, though. This is just uh, me reading a little bit of articles on the internet. So, just FYI. Gotta admit, this road's not too bad. Got a little to complain about. There's a, no, oh, I was right, I was just about to say, I heard there's a pretty good view up here. Well, oh, wow, look at that. That's a very, very nice. Oh, I'm going to have to see if I can stop somewhere. I don't know if this, may, there may be even be better views, who knows. I'll do a snap here at least. I heard there was great views here, by the way, so. That's fantastic up there, if this is part of it. I wasn't expecting that. Looks like there were, might have been a little snow up there. Hey, hey little fellow. More, more hills. All right. It's going down though. Hmm. Nice valley here. Now it's going down. But I'm not, oh look, 
right there you can still see the snow Pinyon National Trail picnic area. Five miles, I think, to Bristle. Bristle Cone. Pine Cone. The fact that I feel like I'm the only person up here is pretty uh, pretty cool too. I mean, it's, who knows? I might go up there and maybe pack with crowds of tourists from all over the world. I doubt it. They say it's about they said there's about 30, or maybe it was town of Bishop gets about 30,000 visitors a year. So. 30,000 isn't a lot, so this is one of those uh, less heard about places I've never heard of this place uh, until I was uh, deciding where I was going to stay at a hotel. And then I uh, just came across this place. They said the oldest, the oldest living something, and I'm like, hmm, am I possibly living so close to the oldest living things in the world? Is it possible that they live in California? And I guess it was, it is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, living organisms. And it's right here, just, you know, seven miles, I'm um, seven hours from, from my, where I live. Oh, now it's going back up a little bit. Can I can I take the risk? Maybe I will. Do wish I had. of you. So these are the oldest trees, huh? I mean, are they older up north? I mean, up higher? And then they, they get younger down as they go down? How does that work? Were these trees at one point at lowest elevation and then through natural ecology or whatnot, they went up, up, and then became a mountain. I don't know.
there are restrooms up here. Why do I think there weren't? Doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't there be restrooms up here? I mean, the forest service people got to go to the bathroom too, right? Yeah, there's got to be a restroom movement up here. I don't know what I was saying. What was I saying? I know they were saying there was no drinking fountain, uh, fountains up here. There's no running water, basically. guardrail so got to be pretty observant here yeah I'm more, more concerned about the guardrails or lack of ground I think I might end up helping me change a tire. You never know. Besides, it's being nice, you know. Something we kind of tend to forget sometimes in the bustling world. Especially uh, in areas like Bay Area. One reason I take this uh, took this journey to see more of uh, of uh, America and uh, those uh, who don't understand that what that means is I'm an immigrant born in poverty in a different country different times and the opportunities here are, are grand where there were very little at the time I'm sure under the circumstances I lived in poor basically homeless living under a bridge and uh, then coming here, evolving with the, the times, and realizing that I was uh, <coughs> always looking at things in a negative light, and then looking at others, other people's blight, you know, especially in uh, Africa, 
well, just generally everywhere, South America, Asia, particularly South Asia, these people just go through their lives and they won't, uh, they don't have these kind of things to worry about. They live their life just to survive, not to look at scenery. Thus makes us and many, many countries in Europe and parts of Asia, of course, unique because we have the luxury of enjoying things outside of just surviving, you know. We're not always trying to survive. We can go in and out of those circumstances, you know. And even on a bad day, for many Americans, we can take a trip and to the park, to the ocean, you know, to the beaches. That's what a lot of us do. A lot of the core folks that normally go through day to day doing their thing, but then on occasion, We'll take uh, some time off and uh, go to the beach for the weekend, you know? Splurge. Really, <clears throat> even just the little things like, you know, having a scoop of ice cream, you know? That's a nice view up there, by the way. This is a fantastic, you know, like I said, you know, you... Yeah, we are poor. A lot of us are. But we still have little things we can do to make our lives bearable or even enjoyable. This is a grand view. I can hardly wait till I can stop and get a great view. Trying to get a good shot of this view. You got Unfortunately, it's coming down downhill that I'm going to enjoy it. That's a view. Okay, now that's a picture worth taking. And I will take one as soon as I get to the highest peak. And it's actually very nice temperature wise here I can't tell you what t what the temperature is I would say because the Sun is so warm I'd say without the Sun it's probably about 50s this is a worthy picture right here I think there's a view they said uh, cut out and I can exit I probably can't send anything out to my sister, you know, and uh, see where I can go. Yeah, let's do it. I'm back. All right, we uh, go up uh, to the. Uh, I don't really think I'm going to walk too far. I don't, uh, these don't have the right right boots. These are really uncomfortable walking too far. But they're really good for bikes, supposedly. But if I can get at one of those trees...
not one person in sight which is good like I said that's after Labor Day so I think most people are probably back to normal work work schedule oh this is a good view too I think it actually goes higher so maybe there's better view up top maybe they give you the best for last and charge you three dollars not that I have anything against three dollars or six dollars I don't know what it is look at that view huh but I gotta ride a bike too so coming back should be a little bit better not feeling the elevation issue. I mean, we're probably at 8,000, 9,000. What? What's this? Road is not closed. Okay. Good to know. It's important to take my time and enjoy things, you know. You don't need to hike everywhere. But if you ride and stop and get a view, even I can appreciate this kind of view. We probably have these around Bay Area, but not nowhere this spectacular. Except maybe Mount Diablo. Maybe I should go up. Maybe I should go up there one day. Even though I think they charge ten dollars or twelve. <laughs> Actually, uh, I should congratulate myself. Uh, I just did my first selfie. It's probably horrible in terms of selfie style. But, you know, it's actually the first one I've actually ever done. I'm not, uh, I'm not really into that kind of stuff. But I figure, you know, try something at least once. And if you don't like it, don't do it again. But if you don't try it, you'll never know. Pin turns. I think, to be honest, I think this is park is uh, one of the uh, least known, lesser known at least. When we talk about all the ones in Utah and stuff, but you know, obviously Yosemite is pretty, pretty famous. But this is not, perhaps because it's elevation. No, I don't know why. It's just maybe not designed for. This is probably like more of a preservation, and so they don't want a lot of people coming up here. Okay, this is interesting. I wasn't expecting this. This is like a little uh, plateau. 
8,000, 9,000 feet above sea level. Can you imagine, like, maybe antelope or horses roaming this area? Buffalo, maybe? I'm talking about hundreds of years ago. Imagine there was something like that, right? Nice and chilly. I love it. You got the sun getting on you, but the air chill is probably in the 50s, maybe upper 50s. It's got a little breeze in there. Okay, where do I go? Oh, turn here. Oh, okay. Schulman Grave Grove. Huh. Recreational fee area. Are there actually people here? Take in the view. Take in the view. Look at that. It's so clean too. I mean, it's really, really clean. I wouldn't recommend riding with one hand, by the way. Not while you're going downhill. Mm -mm -mm. It's got layers. That's what I like about this. It's got layers. It's not just one hill or one view. It's like you could almost see four, five, six different ranges. Some of them obviously a lot lower. It's 
see if I can pull over here. Maybe there's a little turn in. Imagine not, because uh, I don't think anybody would want to stop here, because we're so close to the edge. I mean, this to me competes nicely with the Grand Canyon South, or a South Rim. It's, I imagine it was spectacular, but I didn't really appreciate it while I was there last year. Because uh, I had a uh, eye infection. See if I can turn in here. stop there's uh, too much uh, and I could but just the gravel is just so loose look at that squirrel. You see that? Or a mouse. Wow, that was tiny. Yeah, 
there is pretty clean and what it is it's not windy at all that's what's a it's the combination of silence and air is clean there we did a little haze in the farther out further distance but it's so far away you can still see quite a ways imagine it would be you know 50 miles 40 miles at least Ten thousand feet didn't even feel like it. I expected it to be a little. Uh, I mean, maybe it actually is. I just didn't didn't feel it. The ears didn't really pop that much. You get a. If you come up here, I didn't go all the way up. I just went slightly up the halfway up that hill right here. But if you go up there, I bet you it's a pretty decent view. I mean, that's the best view over there, but over here it's not too bad, not too shabby either. It just looks more deserty. There is a road down there if you can't see it. That's the road we were came up on. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it, but nice little bit of uh, twisties. Not too twisty, but. So as far as uh, technicals, I don't think there really is, it, 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 there is twists, but there's no techni technical skills required here. Depending on the bike you have, uh, I'm in first by the way. But if you uh, going up the hill, I would say, depending on what bike of course and what, how it's geared up, you can put it in a second and just just cruise on up and just leave it there don't even don't break at all unless you're you're having to stop for somebody or something but going around the corners there's no breaking it's just you know it's like literally just let the let the bike ride itself you know and just go go with go at the speed you know I'm going 13 miles an hour And you don't really need to do anything. You said you can go around this corner pretty easily. Yeah. And then of course, stay in your lane. But yeah, you just go cruise down. So I guess that is the, that's the Sierras, right? I mean, it's got to be, it's pretty, pretty hefty. Makes these little places here, we're at 10,000 and look at that, those bike, those mountains there, I heard of, you know, go up to like 14. Mount Whitney is the highest peak, I think. I'm a little confused about the, the mountains, but. I'm in second right now. See how we do in second. Might have to break a little bit here, but only control. I use my rear brakes now. Yeah, it's better. First gear was a little too rigid. Second's better. And then you just apply your back brakes. There is a little bit of gravel in the center of the road. 
but uh, like I said, gentle pressure on the brakes and you shouldn't have any problem with that. Ears are popping a little bit. All right, now the journey, real journey starts. But it's 9.28, I think. I actually don't even know what time it is. And at the rate I says I'm going, I have no idea. I don't even have my... Uh, there is little gravel here, so just be careful when you're riding up here for the less skilled. Shouldn't have any problem taking this road. I think I ended up hitting that rock. question is, I have is now, as soon as I, I'm going to get some gas fill up before I take the long, the long journey, uh, but, whoop, whoop, is, um, it, she waved at me first, I should have waved first. Like being first. Uh, so my trip, my trip to St. George, Utah, I'm gonna go through Nevada. Question is, there's only so many routes you can get. Some probably better than others. I have no idea. I don't think there's much in Nevada to look at. Uh, I do plan on com eh, coming back, taking the Death Valley road or whatever you call it just slightly south uh, I'm talking about the California side by the way slightly south and then then come back up here because I really like these mountains and stuff and then oh but going there is a question because I don't want to really take that valley this this to go to St. George. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Well, it is what it is. I'll, I'll just plan it out and kind of guess which route to take. I don't mind taking a longer route, by the way. It's not the fastest that I want to go. It was the one I would think would be the more enjoyable, if that's a, even a possibility. Like I said, through Nevada. I'm not known for its views, Not at least not in the south. If I go north, well then I've overshot myself, because I would still need to go south again to St. George, stay at a hotel there, and then my hey, and then my park park trip begins, which I hope to hit Zion, Bryce. I don't know if that's in order. I'll have to look at the map. Zion, Bryce, one day, and then go stop, I think I'm stopping at another hotel, which I can't remember the name of, and then 
you know, this, even this is a pretty view. It's kind of a same landscape. There's not like differences in trees. But I like the, you know, I like this uh, layering. It kind of reminds me, at least this half right here, kind of reminds me of North Carolina, if you've never been there. Where you just, uh, the Blue Mountains, I believe it's called. Might be in part in Virginia too, but that's what it reminds me a little bit. Not, not so much of the trees or even the, because I think it's more dense over there in North Carolina. But I'm just talking about the ridges, mountain ridges. Not high mountains, really low, you know. And then, of course, that looks a little different. That looks like Mordor. That looks like no barren mountains. Looks like nothing would grow there. It's just too steep. It looks like a fortress. It looks like walls, a massive amount of wall. doing a lot of editing on my videos I'm not a like I said I just like pulling video and just uh, trimming little tiny bits of it just maybe nuances nuance uh, really just want to just throw out my view of the world uninterrupted. It certainly doesn't attract viewers, but it's really not designed for that. It's really, again, it's, I've brought it up before in my other videos, it's really designed for my future self. You know, there will be a day or a time where I won't be able to ride anymore. Maybe I'm just too old and cranky and I want to be able to just maybe, hopefully YouTube's around, throw some YouTube footage on my 100 inch television, you know, and they'll, by then I'll be 10 million resolution pixels, inches, whatever they call it, billion K. Where I will be able to like just watch the ride, you know. And part of it will be probably just boring, boring scenes. I'm not even sure if this is exciting for most people. I think it is. I think it's fantastic. I do have to remember to check my battery. I sometimes forget to charge it up. So I connect this this camera to a battery pack. Gives me a pretty much almost unlimited or at least all day video. I have a 120K video feed in uh, our SD card. Yesterday, for example, to give you an idea, a trip from starting around Livermore to Bishop with a few stop, stoppings of the camera, but otherwise just overall just at least good four hours of video, maybe five. And I only used uh, 50, 56 gigs I think on the SD card. That's only like half. I had an actual whole half and it was charged by battery. When I checked my battery pack it was at 67. So. I think it's fine. I can do. This, my hope is to do just about every day, all day video feeds. A 
One thing I forgot to check is my uh, tire pressure. I should check that. Those are the things you should check. I do have some air compressor or bat battery version. It's supposed to give me a full tire char uh, load. I've never actually had to use it for to replace a tire, a flat tire, but I use it to uh, put some air around the house uh, or air in my tire at my house. One thing I notice is, uh, I think I fixed this, this is how, this actually helps in, uh, the wind that keeps hitting my left ear. So I don't know why my left ear is the one that always catch it, catch it. I think it's a, a deficiency in the helmet itself. for the gravel. That makes me a little nervous. off uh, my gas so we get a full tank for the beginning I don't know where I think I have to go back to um, back where I came just a little bit I didn't actually see a town but I imagine it's there somewhere I probably go south so I'll probably take 395 south a little ways and then just find a just find a road you know and just take that as long as Google Map tells me it's a road, as long as it's not flipping me back, looping me back to an original road I was on already, I'm happy. I think that's, that's the plan. Well, the ascent, ascension is more, was more fun than the dissension. Is that a word? The descent. The descent, yeah. So the set uh, coming down the mountain is cool, but here it's just like eh, certainly not unpleasant, but it's not that special. At least now that I'm familiar with uh, the roads. saw that guy earlier. Yeah, I think I, that's how long it took. He came, I saw him at the very beginning turn, like a mile, maybe a couple miles from my turn on 395. So he just made it here. Imagine he might have taken a break somewhere. But that's, uh, got a ways to go. Make sure my thing. Yeah, I mean my bag is 
I like it. I like it. It's pretty firm. It's so easy to take off too. It's like two, one, uh, ten seconds, man. That's how easy it is. Putting it back on is about thirty seconds. <laughs> Finally, something that's easy to remove and take off, and pretty sturdy while it's on there. Once I uh, get off the bike, I'll just make sure everything's tightened up properly and uh, yeah good to go I hope it's not as hot yesterday it was pretty pretty darn hot in some areas hopefully it's not like that now so I think I'm gonna make a right again go back to back to 395. Well, I want to see if is there uh, a far when does the GPS start kicking in? That's probably where I'm going to need to go. This gear is not for heat, that's for sure. This jacket is not for heat. Uh, I'm wishing... Last time I took my mesh jacket, I think that was the, the way to go. My concern with the mesh jacket was how cold it was going to be, you know? But I think overall, yeah. I think I need to just take a mesh jacket for at least for this weather and put a rain liner underneath or a, a, maybe a thermal too. Overall I think that's what I should have done. This jacket's not it. The 
there's still gravel on the center of the road, so just be careful. The other thing about riding I would recommend is to gear up, gear down, I mean, to where you think you should be. So if you're, for example, if you feel like you're, you're, uh, you should be in fourth, just do it in, do it in third. Right, and the same is true if you're in fifth, do it in fourth. Uh, the only exception would be straightaways, you know, just and you're piling miles on a on the on a straight concrete then of course max out but on twisties and stuff like that just just ride ride one gear lower than where you think rev higher okay rev higher that's what your bike can handle it go ride it first gear first i mean i'm talking about anywhere from fifth fourth third even sometimes second. You know, if you're if you think you should be in third, you can probably ride in the second gear with no problem. It's less likely you'll use your brakes. Uh, brakes are generally what I would say for beginners or the savior and the mistake brakes. Brakes are the things that can save you, but it also can hurt you. So, to having to not use your brakes is when when there's no reason for it is perfectly fine. Like I'm in third. Yeah, it's, it starts revving higher around 40, 40 miles an hour, right? But if you're doing 30 and near 40, that's okay. It gives you a little punch, but as soon as you you throttle off, it slows you down. It's in your braking, you know. 
and it's so much easier and I and generally speaking you know rarely ever use the front brakes different here in the daylight I mean it was daytime with less shadows it's, it looks very different man can you imagine you trying to climb this thing I'm expecting like mountain goats or something come out of nowhere, you know. I mean, there's probably mountain goats sitting up there right now, staring down at us. I wouldn't even see it. To be honest with you, it's actually very pretty. Barren, for sure, but very pretty. I'm not sure what time it is. Definitely not 9:55 p.m. That see, that's what happens when the when I reset the battery it lost all its uh, shenanigans I'm in road mode actually rode in race mode. I've always had it in road mode. That's a good view. Like I said, the air is pretty crispy. Not cold, but I'm talking about crispy and clear. Crystal clear. All right. if I should raise the seed right now it's on low low seeding but for long trips I wonder if that be, be to my advantage I'll have to think about that I mean it's definitely hard to get on the bike for sure coming in and off the bike but I guess I might have to use my uh, the pegs to climb on but Overall, I think uh, 
something to consider as the longer I sit because this thing like this thing sits decent I mean it's okay but if I sat like a little higher it would my bent knee bend would be less which makes it less fatiguing I would think I'm feeling it at heat, sure. Because it raises it another inch, I think. I forgot to do another way to cool myself off more is I have a back pad that I wanted to remove yes it's a little less unsafe but it'll, it'll allow more air to go through the jacket and vent out I think that back the pad actually prevents that. I'll have to look at it. One thing I have to say about these nice little twisty roads and hills is the difference between this and straight roads, boring roads, is it's not boring. You don't you don't get bored. You don't fall asleep. You're not dozing off. I was uh, over in New Mexico, uh, no Arizona, and there were just places that were so so boring. I was just slowly just like dozing off on the on my bike and to the point where I had to stop and stretch a little bit not because I was fatigued but just because I was just bored nothing to look at especially early in the morning I left uh, Farmington I think that's uh, Farmington Arizona or New Mexico and I rode for a good hour in the dark hour and a half in the dark I left at around 4 o'clock 4.30 I think in the morning and by the time I actually by the time I was in the middle of nowhere uh, I had to stop uh, went off the road on some dirt road clay kind of road powdery though not clay wet clay powder it's almost like if I saw a road here and this I would just go on it for about a mile just so I could feel something different other than the same same thing looking at the same thing it was just change of scenery and the few road felt different so that was nice I had to like stop a couple times doing that and unfortunately I had some pretty the best footage I had was like this valley 
I was going this valley and and I could see the road going straight straight up the hill like like this hill not as high and unfortunately I thought I had a recording but it, it was one of those situations where it was a perfect it was early morning too the sun was coming up and I was just trying to feed it it was chilly and I was trying to get to the sun as quickly as possible and it was like here nowhere middle of nowhere and uh, and I was like so excited I was going to get some footage on that and I'm going to add that but unfortunately I didn't I didn't have any recording of that but this is it this kind of like looks like it it was a little more drier because it's in the southern Nevada didn't have these green stuff but yeah it's fantastic and it, the road climbed all the way up all the way up you know so Sadly, I didn't have footage of that, so hopefully I get footage today and for the next seven days. So I'll just upload. I have a hard drive. I've been. I'm gonna just throw that everything on there. Uh, I have 750, I think, gigs of space, and with yesterday's, that's 58. And then I might even have a couple more uh, gigabytes on the laptop itself. So with those two. We're back to about 4,000 elevation, so I think this is a lot. I'm waiting for my ears to pop. So with that in mind, I think I, you know, with the 56 and then let's say another seven, 60 or 70 here today, and each day for the next four or five days, it'll be close. I might have to go and pick up another external hard drive. I hope I don't have to, but that's just more stuff left to carry. But yeah, it's, uh, it was. Uh, I think it'll be. This is going to work out right. I just have to make sure our battery's charged up, and I need to do every night. I'm going to have to transfer my footage over, and uh, I'm not even going to edit anything because I honestly I don't even have an editing tool. I think 395 is right there somewhere. And the wind, it's so, the wind is so, it is a little breeze, but generally it's pretty calm. Very unusual for me, because I'm usually dealing with wind all the time and I can this is nothing you know about, I wonder if, yeah it may be about the windshield helping a little bit you know I don't know what time it is I, I want to guess it to be around 10 in the morning 10 in the morning so that gives me about five to six hour trip I think it's a little over 300 miles. I can cover a lot of that, I'm sure, on uh, on the straightaways. But I guess that's all it is, straightaways. Maybe there is a little twist here and there. But I gotta switch out these glasses because they gave me a headache because uh, they put put so much pressure on uh, the helmet. So uh, take those off. Also need some water. Remember, drink a lot of water. I bought two bottles this time. Plus, I had some water that I had that I got at the hotel. I just used tap water. Not something I would recommend. But I was so thirsty last night, I, I didn't want to go anywhere and grab some water, so and they didn't have any at the restaurant. I mean, they did, but I didn't want to carry the deal with that stuff, so I just drank out of the pack. So far, so good. I mean, incubation, you know, maybe two weeks, so something comes out of my stomach, but, uh, but I should be okay. I, I read, I actually checked on the line just to read about the water and where they were getting the water for water consumption and 
apparently I thought it would, you know, it'd be directly from the hills, but apparently they, they get water from the well. Now that water may come from the hills too, so maybe they're just saying that it goes to an aquifer in underground and then they pull the water out. I don't know. Seems to me like they would go up, they'd have a, a guy with a big bucket uh, to go up in the mountains, grab snow, melt it and bring it down and, and water everybody, you know. Who knows? All I'm saying is the water didn't taste terrible. Uh, I got it right off the faucet, so it's probably not filtered. But I'm alive, I didn't get sick, not yet anyway. But if you can, drink bottled water, especially in foreign areas.